Good morning. Today we will be reviewing chapter 6 of 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. I am about 7 or 8 minutes late this morning. I have to wait for the kids to, to leave to go to school. And May didn't have to pick up a friend, so she left a few minutes late. She usually leaves right at 8 o'clock on the dot. So right when I'm starting the video, she's walking out the door. So good morning to everybody. It is cloudy here in Georgia, kind of gloomy and rainy. Um, I've been up since 6 o'clock. And um, so I hope y'all are ready to start your day. Um, like I said, I'm a little late because my kids go to school in the mornings. And May was a little late getting out the door. Today we are, are going to be reviewing the Exodus era in our 30 Days to Understanding the Bible book. And uh, this is all about Moses and the Israelites um, and their movement and what all they did. So uh, this is the Exodus era that in the Old Testament. Um, Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Linda. How are y'all today? I hope you're doing good. Um, he starts out the chapter saying that lots of times the Exodus is portrayed in movies as a few people under some palm trees, you know, traveling through. But he said that, that it was a lot more, it was a lot more people than that. You know, they don't portray it so much in the movies as well as it could be. Um, he was saying it would be like, if you look at the state of Texas, everybody in the city of Dallas, which is a large city, moving all the way across the state together, okay? Um, because it was a lot of people. And if you, if you remember, the reason they were in Egypt was because Joseph, the brother that was sold off, wound up going into Egypt and saving his family from the famine so everybody kind of migrated to Egypt when they were hungry. And eventually God blessed the people there so much that they grew in number and the Egyptians thought they were getting too large of numbers and didn't want them to um, take over their lands. Good morning, Juanita. So, um, hence the story of a new leader comes into play that doesn't know um, Jacob and the Israelites. And so he wants to get rid of all these people in his, well, he don't want to get rid of them. He just wants them to work for free. So they wound up being slaves um, in Egypt. Okay. So after a while, it's, it says that the people started crying out to God and God listened. And so uh, it says, what's so strange about this show? Let me look for a second. Okay, that's right. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the deliverance. Uh, the storyline summary is through Moses, God delivers the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt and then gives them the law. Okay? So, uh, that is our era and our summary. And it says that there are four major events in the Exodus era. Those are deliverance, the law, Kadesh, Bernia, or Kadesh, Bernia, 40 years of wandering. All right. So, the first one's deliverance, and it's freedom from slavery in Egypt. It says the Hebrews cry out to God, and God raises up Moses. Now, um, I was reading this morning in my Bible, uh, and when Exodus starts out, it tells the story of Moses, and it talks about how the ruler in Egypt tells the midwives to deliver the uh, Israelites' children, and when they deliver the kids, to get rid of the child if it's a boy. Now, the midwives, let me get off this thing. I'm sitting on a, sorry y'all, but I'm sitting on top of a blanket that's driving me crazy. Now, I've been up since I was early. When I got up early, um, I was covered up with that blanket. Anyway, uh, 
Anyway, the midwives, and this is not in our storyline, but I was just going to tell you, the midwives know that the Israelites are blessed by God, and they're afraid to get rid of the babies because they are afraid that that would uh, be bad on them, you know, that God would punish them for it. So they wound up telling the Pharaoh that the um, Israelites' children were born so fast they didn't have time to get there to deliver their babies to do that. Um so then he decides that he'll just put out a rule that every child that's born, um, if it's a male, gets killed. And uh, so what happens is Moses' mother, she hides him in her house for so many weeks, and then she puts him in a basket, makes a basket out of reed, and she floats him down the river. The Pharaoh's daughter finds the basket, she calls him Moses because it means to draw out, which is because she drew him out of the river. And she actually finds a maiden to um, nurse the child, which happens to be Moses' real mother. And uh, so Moses actually grew up in an Egyptian pharaoh's home. Okay. Later on, he kills an Egyptian for beating a, um, one of his pe Hebrew people. And he gets caught. They catch him. Well, they don't catch him and, you know, actually grab him and catch him. But somebody notices. And so he uh, flees. But that's the story of how Moses comes about. Okay. So just the fact that he was born and he lived is miraculous. So then God chooses Moses to free the Hebrew people. Okay. Amy says she sends him down the Nile. Yes, and uh, so they get uh, Moses um, follows God's rule, and he takes the people out of Egypt. Now, uh, the Pharaoh, of course, refuses in the beginning. And this is when the seven, I think it was ten plagues in Egypt. And the it says the plagues started out bad, but they get worse, from frogs to gnats to water turning into blood, to the death of the firstborn of every household in Egypt. And finally, Pharaoh consents to let the Hebrews leave Egypt. You're right, Amy. This is the story of the Passover. And it's a story in itself, and it's a beautiful story of how uh, the children are saved by the blood putting over the uh, door so that the, the angel the death angel actually misses their homes. Um, but he changes his, the, it, it does say, there's a lot of good reading in Exodus. So let me just say that. We're having to skip over a lot of it. But you know, this is kind of like a paraphrase. But if you want to, you can go back and read it. Because, I mean, there's some beautiful miracles that God performs to get these people out of Egypt. And, um, but finally, the Pharaoh consents, and he lets them leave. And then he changes his mind, and he goes after them. And we all know that's when God parted the Red Sea. The Hebrew people are moving through the Red Sea. And as they come across the Red Sea, he actually has the water go over the armies of Pharaoh. Pharaoh. And um, then they go, that is the deliverance. The first part of our summary was the deliverance, the freedom from slavery in Egypt. Boy, that's a short little story compared to what all happened, okay? Then the next thing that happens in this is that God gives them the law. And um, it says that God commands, com God's commandments at Mount Sinai was given to Moses, okay? And Moses turns around, of course, and gives them to the people. It says that Moses meets with God alone at the top of Mount Sinai, where he receives the Ten Commandments written on tablets of stone by the finger of God. Moses also receives a full revelation of the law that is to govern Israel, Israel's national uh, life, as well as her relationship to God. He promised, God promises to bless her abundantly for obedience and to curse her soundly for disobedience. And so God gives them the law. They are to follow the law. 
If they follow it, they'll be blessed. And if they don't follow it, they will be cursed. And he tells them plainly, you know, that that is what they are to do. Now, the place of rebellion against God happens at Kadesh Barnea. That's the third phase of this uh, section that we're studying the Exodus era. And that is a place where the people rebelled against God, where God uh, takes them to this place and he, it's like a entrance to the promised land. And what they do is they get one person from each tribe to go into the land to spy, okay? When they come back, only two of those spies um, favor the idea of going into the land. The other ones are scared because they say that there's giants and there's big armies and um, they wind up not going in because the people decided to go with the majority, which with the majority, of course, was um, that they shouldn't go in. So this was a, not a very good time because they disobeyed God when God told them plainly they could go in and he would make a way. They didn't listen to God. Okay. So um, that's why this becomes known as a place of rebellion against God. Okay. That is Kadesh Barnea. That's the third, the third part to the Exodus era. So right now we have the deliverance. We have, I believe it's the uh, law, I guess. Let me look. The law, of course. And then it's the rebellion. And then the fourth thing is going to be 40 years of wandering. Now, consequences of a rebelling against God were big. I mean, he's, he plainly said that everybody that was 21 years old or older, 20 or 21, no, 21 years old, or older at the time, has to die before he will deliver his people into, into Canaan. That is a very long time. So uh, it says a new generation comes to leadership, and they're willing to follow the leaders into the land. And so Moses leads them to the north of the Dead Sea near Jericho, the eastern gateway to the Promised Land, and he encourages the people and he gives them additional instructions found in the book of Deuteronomy. And, and then Moses dies. So this is when everybody has died. Um, Moses, uh, you know, encourages them to, to go into the land. And so the, the fourth part is 40 years of wandering. Now we have a self-test in the back, of course. And it's really simple where we just match up what we just talked about. Um at the top here, and then we have a uh, chart as well to fill in the blank. And here it says the era is Exodus through Moses. God in the in the fill in the blank is delivers the Hebrew people from slavery is the next blank in Egypt, and then gives them the law is the next blank. So, um, like I said, this. Uh, this study talks about a lot in a very short 15-minute uh, section. And there's a lot of miracles uh, that happen in the Exodus era, okay, that are just wonderful, that are amazing, that helps people know who God really is. And um, they don't have to even think about who their God is because he shows out really big, okay? Um, let's see what this says. It says, the miracles God performed during this time are among the most spectacular recorded in the Bible. The Nile River turned to blood. Shepherds' rods turned into snakes. The firstborn of every Egyptian household died. And the Red Sea parted to allow the Israelites to cross over on dry land, escaping an Egyptian army. Um, so if you really want to, you know, learn more about the Exodus era, of course you can read, uh, the book of Exodus in your Bible. And I think it, and then it starts into De Deuteronomy. Now the next era we're going to review is the conquest era with Joshua. And we will talk about that tomorrow. Um, 
and I hope that y'all are still going along and looking in your little books, and I hope that you enjoy this. Now, for those of y'all that are just taking notes, real quick, I'll give you a summary of the notes that you should take, and that is just uh, mainly we have all these eras of the Old Testament, so it begins with the Old Testament, so you should have notes that say the era is creation with Adam in Eden, and then you should have an era with patriarch era with Abraham in Canaan, and now today you should be able to add the Exodus era with Moses in Egypt, okay? And each of those have a storyline summary, and Adam's is Adam is created by God, but he sins and destroys God's original plan for man. For Abraham, it's Abraham is chosen by God to father a nation to represent God to the world. And now our next summary is... Through Moses, God delivers the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt and then gives them the law. My daughter's texting me. That's what you hear, the little ding-dong things. To tell me what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing. I'll have to read it in a minute. But she should be at school by now. Um. But that's it in a nutshell, y'all. That's a simple little um, review. And like I said, if you want to learn more about the Exodus, go to your Bibles and read the book of Exodus. And you will get a lot more from reading the book of Exodus than what we've reviewed here. Because like I said, it's, a, it's an amazing book. These history books in the Bible are really, really good. Um, and they're not hard to follow either. So you should be able to pick up the Bible and just read them. And get a lot out of it, okay? Um, we're going to say our prayers. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. I hope you have a blessed week. I hope to see you again tomorrow. It is Monday. Let's not make it Monday, Monday. Let's get up and start our chores. <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's get up and start our chores early so that we get some stuff accomplished today. That's what I plan to do. I hope so. Um, so let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for our friendship through um, Real Southern Woman and Colored Valley Cooks. We thank you for letting us live in a country where we can freely come to you and worship. Um, we thank you for your word that gives us examples and shows us how powerful you are, what a true God you are, and how much you love your people. Um, be with us as we go throughout our day. Help our loved ones be safe. Please keep us from harm and sin today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, it's Monday. Chris is still snoozing, that little turkey. He likes to sleep late. And Mondays are usually the day if he's going to sleep late, he does. We had a very long day. We went to my brother's um, <clears throat> homecoming yesterday, and so we were at, <clears throat> excuse me, we went to Card Valley Baptist Church, and it was packed, y'all. It was such a great turnout for him and for the church, and it was really, really good, and we enjoyed it. But we got up early, and all I did is cook a big tray, a double batch of peanut butter bars, which every one of them got eight. And, uh, which was good because we didn't have to bring them home and eat them. And I had taken that soup that I made the day before and there was so much food. Um, but we enjoyed our visit there yesterday and we have not been to our regular church now in three weeks because we were at the beach for two weeks and we were at Eddie's homecoming yesterday. So we'll probably go Wednesday and get to see everybody again. I know it's been a long time since we've been, uh, to our own church. Um, y'all just, uh, I hope y'all have a good day and, um, I hope to see you soon.
y'all come see me in the morning. Thanks for watching Real Southern Woman. Bye, I love ya.